What's going on everyone? My name is Jake and I am a contract audio engineer and sound enthusiast. I know there are a lot of people out there looking to learn the art of music production and sound engineering through online resources. And I'm sure you know that there is so much to learn. Because of this, one of the most basic concepts of sound engineering and music production is often overlooked. These concepts have to do with what sound actually is, how it works, and how we as humans perceive it. So I wanted to create these quick explanation videos to give you that information in a very timely manner so that you can later apply and better understand what you are actually doing when recording, mixing, and mastering. So let's waste no more time and get right into the video. Frequency is one of the three measurable concepts of sound that I want to explain through these series of videos. If you watch the first video, you will know that sound compresses and rarefacts. One complete compression and rarefaction cycle is measured by what is called a period. However, it's usually referred to as one cycle. One cycle of a sound wave is the amount of time needed for this compression and rarefaction process to pass a given point. Now taking this one step further, the number of cycles that occur over the period of one second determine the frequency of that sound wave, and we label this measurement as hertz. So, knowing this, we can conclude that the more periods that happen per second, the higher the frequency of the sound wave. But how do we as humans perceive frequency? Well, we perceive it as pitch, and let me show you exactly what I mean. Now, let me tell you a few things about this session before I show you the examples here. You can see that I have a marker, which is flashing right now, at about one second of time. And this will help us just visualize how many cycles per second are happening. Now, if we go over here, we can see this is 262 hertz this sine wave here, so there should be approximately 262 cycles for this amount of time. Now if we go down one track, we'll see 524. Therefore, being there's 524 cycles, and on this one, there's 1,048 cycles per second. Now, from what we've learned, we should conclude that this will be the lowest sounding frequency out of all of them. So let's just kind of take a quick listen to all of them and make sure that this is the case. So that was 262. Let's listen to 524. And in fact, that is higher. Now let's just quickly listen to 1048 hertz. So it's easy to conclude that it is in fact true that when a frequency gets higher, so does the pitch. Now obviously the waveforms that I just played for you are just one of one pitch in themselves. And you'll probably realize that it sounded kind of dull, boring, and almost obnoxious when you heard 1048 hertz. It definitely does not have the same amount of detail as an instrument like a saxophone or a guitar or anything. So what I wanted to show you as well was this saxophone track here and kind of explain why instrument tracks sound the way they do. So let's solo this here. Let's take a quick listen. So as you can tell, there's a lot more detail. The reason for this is that the instrument is made up of many, many of these individual frequencies, and each and every sound that we hear in our daily lives even has a unique makeup and combination of these frequencies. These combination of frequencies have labels. The frequency that we identify the sound as is called the fundamental frequency, or the first harmonic. And every frequency above it that attributes to the uniqueness of that particular sound is known as its overtone harmonics. Second harmonic, third harmonic, fourth harmonic, so on and so forth. So if we go back to the idea that sound is created from a vibrating membrane, we'll note that the characteristics of that sound depend on the size, shape, and environment around the vibrating membrane. The saxophone is a great example because the air vibrates through the body of the instrument and releases through certain keys that the musician is pressing, creating different frequencies depending on which keys are open and closed. In a way, a musician creates a type of environment for the vibrating membrane that is the instrument. Let's take a look at another example. Music is sound, correct? So all of this relates to the music you would have learned about if you've ever taken any music classes or instrument lessons. In Western music, we tune our instruments using the frequency 440 Hz as a reference. 
This is the A note above middle C on a piano. You may have heard the term A440, and this is where that comes from. Well, every single note in Western music is actually just a name referencing a specific frequency. Like middle C is referencing 261 hertz, and the C below that is around 130.5 hertz. Now, through this information, we can see that every doubling of frequency relates to a musical octave. So if we wanted to know the frequency of the next A higher on the piano, all we would need to do is double the frequency. This goes for all notes. Pretty straightforward, right? If you ever find yourself studying music, you will find a lot of these types of patterns which connect with ease. If you are interested in learning more about sound, make sure to stay tuned for more quick explanation videos that cover the nature of these concepts. Thanks for tuning in.